Hello, my name is Christopher Kurdak, and I'm a meteorologist and science educator at the Fairbanks Museum in St. Johnsbury, Vermont. I also really enjoy doing homestead activities, such as farming and gardening. I've raised lambs, goats, sheep, as well as some um, ducks, as well as rabbits before. And I did a, a first video a couple weeks ago on kind of how to get your backyard poultry operation up and going. Today, I'm gonna go over some points that I made a couple weeks ago, as well as take us on outside and have us check out my operation and show you what works for me. But a couple weeks ago, I did touch base on kind of what you needed to do to kind of get everything set if you were getting a backyard flock, maybe points to um, remember about, such as um, making sure you have a good shelter, water and food. Those were the three major points and I kind of elaborated on those. Um, also kind of going at and debating on what type of poultry to get, whether it be ducks, geese, turkeys, or chickens, as well as what you're using the poultry for, whether it be for eggs or for meat. Um, so I do have a couple more suggestions. So I did have some more bits I wanted to put in this video before we went back on outside. But we're gonna check out what works for me and uh, I wanna thank everyone for joining and hopefully everybody's been staying healthy. Another point I wanted to make is that you definitely need to get in a routine. I am a very regimented type of guy. I'm also very clean, and I think these carry over into why I have been successful with farming. I always make sure my operation is clean, but I'm never forgetful about my daily regimen. So that means every morning when I get up, I, I don't necessarily have to get up early to let them out, but whenever I get up, if it's a weekend, I can get up a little later, or if it's a weekday, I'm up early for work, I make sure I go out to the shelter, I open them up, I let them out, make sure they get fresh air and some sunlight, make sure they have the necessities such as water and food, make sure that their bedding is not too soiled. If it's a little soiled, again, I wanna stretch the wood chips a little bit, that's fine. You know, they are chickens, um, but I wanna make sure I'm in that daily routine. I come home after work, pretty much as the sun sets, if your chickens or ducks are homed well, so that means they know where their home is, they're most likely gonna go in there right around sunset or just after sunset. All I really have to do, same deal as I do in the mornings, make sure that they have food, they have water, take the door, close it on in there, and they're ready to go. And again, that's definitely, you want to get in that routine um, to make sure that you are regimented every day. You do not want to forget to not let them out one day. Nothing bad would happen if you left them in, day, in, in the shelter for a day or two and they had plenty of room and food and water. 100% healthy spot to do, but as well as maybe if you forgot to put them in at night, that's a bigger issue because then they're more prone to predators. There's a whole bunch of different shelters. My shelter is just a four-sided enclosed shelter. Sometimes you could see shelters that have outdoor runs on them, so kind of are an enclosed shelter, but also have a fenced-in run. So, you know, you can, even if you're away for a day or two, they have plenty of food and water, they'll still be able to get some fresh air and run inside and out. Another point when it comes to getting a shelter, I suggest kind of keeping it maybe at a minimum when your investment is a shelter. There's some really nice coops out there. I call them like duck or chicken Taj Mahals that it can be well over a thousand dollars. And you know, that's really great. But if you got six chickens in a thousand dollar coop and you're trying to lay some, have them lay some eggs, you gotta have them for a long time to kind of get your money's worth out of that shelter opposed to just going to the store and buying the eggs. So I suggest maybe using some scrap wood or as long as it's dry, not rotted, maybe some scrap wood or maybe some you know less expensive materials because at the end of the day, your belt poultry is going to be pooping in that shelter. It's not like it's going to be kind of in a good position where you know it's going to stay clean and pristine. So, you know, I get kind of taken aback when I see these thousand dollar shelters out there for six chickens and I'm like, well, they're just gonna poop in and ruin it anyway. So again, I usually like to use some scrap wood or maybe use an older shelter and reconfigure that. You know, they don't have to look great. They just have to serve the purpose of, you know, keeping your ducks uh, or your chickens safe, as well as dry, as well as a nice place to bed at night. You know, they're gonna get dirty. They're gonna go back in there. They're gonna poop. They're gonna do their thing in there. And again, you don't wanna kinda get a really nice product and have them muck it up. So definitely keep that in mind um, when it comes to um, your shelter, as well as size. You know, you definitely wanna make sure they have plenty of space. You can look online for suggested amount of square footage for the amount of animals you have. 
I like to keep mine not too compact, but you know, a decent size because again, you are paying for wood chips to put down to keep them clean. So if you have a bigger area, you're going through more wood chips, therefore your costs are going up. Wood chips are about a $5, about a, a yard. So, you know, they're kind of pricey as they add up after time. Usually about I go through a bag or two of wood chips, about two bags of wood chips uh, a month. So you can see how quickly between, you know, the wood chips, the shelter and the green, these expenses can add up. And again, you know, if you have the expendable income, go for it, buy that nice Taj Mahal shelter. But again, I don't really get the point if, you know, you're spending, it comes out to be a dollar an egg for the chickens, you know, when you can kind of keep your costs down and get the same product, the same great product, but you know, not spend as much money on it. Maybe even if you get it right, you can even do cheaper than the conventional eggs at the store. So therefore you're getting cheaper eggs that are better for yourself. And that's usually, as a home center, what I try to go for. I try to go for a better product that I can either spend the same amount of money or if not less than I would get at the store because I know it's a healthier product. I know how the product is being raised and I know they're treated very well and they're in a clean setting. All right, as you can see, we've made it outside. I got these guys a little bit early in the season, so I'm actually keeping them on my front lawn, but I actually want to move them into the backyard sooner than later. During the pandemic, it's tough to find a couple people to help me move the shelter, so hopefully I'll be able to move the shelter sooner than later. Always good to put wheels on your shelter if you'd like to move it a little bit easier. And usually I will use the hose to help their water out, but actually just got this bucket of water over here. I also got a picture of the grain I like to use, and I like to show you all the grain usually comes with this little tag on the side, tag on the side, and this helps kind of show you everything that's in there. Um, and you can see right there though, the crude protein is the biggest one, and there's 20%. And again, the more protein is uh, better for uh, maybe if you're growing animals. Um, for meat and again, you can see it's mostly corn that's the first ingredient in there that's mostly what we feed but again it kind of shows you um, there's feeding recommendations and um, kind of gives you all the information of you know where it came from and what's in it as well as kind of the, the amount of salt and protein and whatnot we also have the uh, medium flake which is our bedding and a suggestion I like to use a uh, uh, kind of a Rubbermaid container with your typical grain scoop right here to kind of keep to make sure um, my grain is uh, safe and dry and also you know we do get some mice this time of year so it keeps the mice out so I just grab grab a Rubbermaid container I'm gonna fill just to scoop up and again it all depends on your operation but um I've got these guys are for meat birds so I get free rain as much as grain as they would like so if we want to come down here we'll be able to check out a uh, uh, see, the, check out these little guys in the yard and uh, give us some more tips. As you can see here, I have a bit of a mixed flock. I have some Muscovies, and I think these other brown ones are called the uh, Golden 300s. This is my front lawn, so you want to make sure you put your ducks or poultry somewhere where you think they'll probably be a good spot for them to kind of ravage. These ducks like to play in the mud and make a mess. So you can see here, they did a good job of uh, tearing up my sod over here. You can also see that they are in their fence currently. This is where they usually live. But again, during the day, I kind of open their fence up throughout during the day. And as you can see there, it's, it's wide open so they can get out and play in the puddles in the driveway or maybe go across the street and hang out in the marsh. There's a picture of these guys right here. I also have um, their grain right here. I usually keep it in their shelter, but I took it out to show us. As you can see here, I just use a, about a, just a regular pot, an old part, pot if you've got it hanging around your house. And again, you just wanna throw the scoop right in there and they're ready to go with the grain. I'm gonna take us over here. And again, as you can see, some of these basic household items are great, like I said, so that old pot, maybe an old Rubbermaid container. This is where I've been keeping their water recently. I'm using that old bucket to kind of fill it up because again, they're in the front yard and my hose is in the back. So usually I use the hose or usually what I like to do is I've got like a fire pit in the backyard. I like to fill that up with water for the ducks. Ducks are obviously waterfowl, so if you're raising turkeys or, or uh, chickens, they don't need this kind of big space for water. As you can see here though, they love making a mess of the ducks. So again, if you do plan on getting ducks, definitely prepared for a messy yard. 
And I've got a basic shelter here. This has actually all been refurbished from, from used wood. So again, I prefer not to use anything too fancy because they're just going to muck it up anyway. So we can take a peek in here. This the, the wood chips I changed a couple days ago. So they are a bit soiled. So I've got my regular stash of wood chips over here. I'm going to freshen them up a little bit. And like I said, I like to kind of freshen them up every few days to make sure they've got a, a good area to call home. And again, and usually every night they kind of hop right in there and uh, go right inside in their shelter at night right around dusk and again I like to free range mine if you've got maybe some if you've got some maybe dogs in your yard or predators I suggest keeping them in the fence but again these guys are pretty happy I let them free range and hang out they're always eating as you can see there, the brown ones are kind of looking for some yummies in the ground right there. They love to eat insects. These guys eat pretty much anything. They'll eat dirt, they'll eat vegetation, they'll eat insects. Pretty much what they don't eat is me or each other. So I want to thank everybody for coming out in the yard. And hopefully there have been some good tips here to help us uh, get our backyard poultry operation going. And hopefully I'll be doing a, another video when it comes to animal husbandry, when it comes to raising lamb. Hopefully everybody stays healthy, and hopefully you guys check me out next time.